Hi there. I'm here today with a sandfish skink, which is one of the craziest creatures you will ever see in your whole life. I, I love these things. In fact, I can remember when I was probably 12 years old, I went to a pet store that was near my house where I grew up called Catfish Charlie's. It's not there anymore. And I saw for the first time in my life a sandfish skink, and it was just sitting up on top of the sand, and then suddenly it vanished. They're so crazy. They've got a face that kind of looks like maybe like a, a duck with the eyes of a great white shark or the eyes of a great white shark on a doorstop. I'm not quite sure how to describe it, but it's, it's a ridiculous face. And you'll see very clearly what they use that face for, but it's wild. They've got, they got basically the normal fusiform body shape of other skinks, which you know I love, except their scales are so ridiculously slippery. They've got one of the lowest friction coefficients of anything out there, which just means they're, they're super duper smooth and they just glide through sand. And to help them with that, they've got these ridiculous feet. They're not like the feet of any other lizard I've ever seen. Honestly, they're more like oars or paddles like you might have on a kayak than they are like feet. And if you put them on a flat ground that isn't sand, they can't even like lay them down. They're just always sort of cupped and ready to go. And what they really are is they are feathered with, with scales that come out and make these sort of lobes out of their toes like the feet of a grebe. These lobate swimming feet that grebes have. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you should look up grebes because they're rad and they're dinosaurs. But they use these feet to swim right through the sand and it is unbelievable how good at moving underneath sand these lizards are. It's ridiculous. Obviously, these lizards are insanely cool. And you could have one as a pet, but is it the right pet lizard for you? Overall, we give the sandfish skink a score of 3.6 out of 5. And that will come down to our five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the sandfish skink a score of 2 out of 5. And this is actually well reflected by the fact that our sandfish skink is in a glass enclosure right now. It's not because they're going to hurt you. They're certainly not. Um, their claws are built for digging. They're not really built for gripping onto anything. They're not going to scratch you. They can bite, but it doesn't hurt. And generally, they're not going to attempt this either. They're not going to hurt you. They are very difficult to hold on to, though, because they're so ridiculously slippery. And they just don't really enjoy being handled very much. And if they're properly warm, they're actually very difficult to handle. So generally, you don't want to handle them any more than is absolutely necessary. Their little tail, they can drop it. And so you want to be careful about this when you're trying to pull them out of the sand. Generally, when a sandfish skink is buried, it can be extremely difficult to find it in the enclosure. And if you need to get it out, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to comb through that sand with your fingers and feel the skink and just gently lift it out. You don't want to grab onto the skink because it will slip through your hand and you'll end up grabbing that tail. Could lose it. It's not likely, but it is a possibility. Sandfish, generally speaking, are not really a pet to handle. They're more of a pet to watch, which is a little bit of a bummer because most of the time they're hidden, so it's sort of not a, a pet to watch or handle, but they are stinking rad, so maybe it's all worth it. When it comes to care, we give the sandfish skink a score of 5 out of 5. Honestly, as far as lizards or reptiles in general go, these are about as easy to care for as is possible. They come from some of the most inhospitable environments in the whole world, and as a result, they're pretty much tough as nails. For the most part, they just need to be kept hot, and they need to be kept dry. You're going to achieve this primarily just through having appropriate basking lamps and, and maybe a heat pad underneath as well. They eat really well on a variety of insect feeders. Uh, you're going to want to dust those periodically with vitamin supplements and calcium, like with basically any lizard that you're going to keep. And then I would recommend keeping them in a dish, uh, though perhaps running around would be good as well. It's just going to come down to when the lizard comes out to look for food. It, they need to be in a place where it will find them. 
It is probably a good idea to provide a water bowl with them. It doesn't need to be a large water bowl because they're not going to get in there and soak in it, um, but they will drink from a bowl. Generally speaking, they're going to be buried all the time, and so a good substrate is necessary. I would recommend sand. I would recommend real sand, like play sand and not calcis sand, uh, as some animals have a tendency to overconsume calcium sand. So just put regular sand in there. That is actually what these guys are built for. It's because they're on loose substrate sand that I recommend having the insects in sort of some sort of a bowl that will keep the sand out so they don't ingest any more than is absolutely necessary. These guys also definitely need floor space much more than vertical space. They're not climbers. They're, they're goofy little cup or hands don't even work very well for climbing anything at all. These guys are made for swimming through sand. And so, a whole lot of sand is exactly what they want. And for the most part, they just like to be left alone. When it comes to hardiness, we give the sandfish skink a score of 4 out of 5. Really, these guys are really, really tough. They've got one major downside to them, and that is that they're almost all wild caught. As I understand it, there have been some captive bred babies that have been produced, but generally speaking, they're all wild caught, and so they come with some of the complications that generally are associated with wild caught animals, such as parasites and dehydration. Because these guys are so tough, they seem to deal with it better than most imports, but it's still something to be concerned about. Once they're established in captivity, once they've been in captivity for a while, uh, they're probably just going to be rock solid, about as good as a lizard can possibly be. And if you can get one captive bred, I mean, that's going to be out of sight. Just fantastic. When it comes to availability, we give the sandfish skink a score of 3 out of 5. They're becoming more common as time goes by, but they're still almost completely unavailable captive bred, which is the way that we would recommend getting a pet lizard or a pet snake or any sort of pet reptile. Not only are they likely to be healthier, which isn't as big of a concern with sandfish skinks, but it's just more sustainable. We're not impacting the wild population when we're captive breeding. When we're collecting wild caught individuals, we are actually decimating the wild population, and it's hard to say if they're being appropriately managed where they're found. Um, these guys are mostly found in Africa and Asia, and, and some of those countries might not have the best management programs. When you're looking for a sandfish kink, if you're looking for a captive bred one, probably the only place you're going to be able to find one would be online. Somebody would be posting that they've produced a few babies. And those may be captive born in that they were, uh, they, they purchased a, an animal that was already impregnated and they have babies. But if you can find a captive bred one, that's where you're going to find it. Otherwise, they are available at expos and in pet shops. Uh, for example, we got this one at Animal Ark in Orem, Utah, which is one of the great pet shops. Pet shops that carry a lot of reptiles will periodically have sandfish kinks. The issue isn't finding one. I mean, they're out there. You can find one. The, the difficult thing is finding one that's been responsibly sourced, and it's hard to guarantee that it has been unless you can find one that's captive bred. My personal recommendation would be to only buy them if you're an experienced skink breeder and, and you're planning to provide them for the reptile hobby. Otherwise, I just don't think it's really responsible to take these guys from the wild to have them as pets. When it comes to upfront cost, we give the sandfish skink a score of 4 out of 5. The skink itself is very affordable, as is generally the case with wild caught animals. And those captive bred babies will cost more, but uh, oftentimes when you have captive bred animals that are having to compete with wild caught animals, even the captive bred ones are pretty affordable. The enclosure for these guys is not terribly expensive, just sort of a typical glass enclosure works really well for them. Something with a screen top that you can put a really hot light on though would be ideal. They'll need a water dish, some sand, uh, heat lights, and also UVB lights. These guys are definitely going to need full spectrum lighting because these guys are from the full spectrum sun of the desert. And then, you're set. I mean, that is, that is really everything you're going to need for a sandfish skink. And we'll have links to all these things down in the description. Hopefully now you understand why we give the sandfish skink a score of 3.6 out of 5. They really are amazing lizards. I, I wouldn't necessarily consider them to be a great pet lizard in that they're not highly interactive. You probably should mostly just leave them alone. But as far as a really 
awesome, unusual, cool lizard that is likely to do pretty well in captivity. These guys are really quite amazing. If you want something that you won't see very often, that sits in a tank full of sand and occasionally pops up with one of the most ridiculous faces and craziest adaptations you've ever seen, the sandfish skink might be the perfect pet reptile for you. But again, try to wait until they're available captive bred. As always, like and subscribe. And don't forget to check out our Patreon. We have so many cool features available for those of us that are supporting this channel with Patreon because they're helping us do amazing new things and we're hoping that we can show them a few a few things that are that are special. One of these things is that every week they get a video called Patreon Extras which just shows a little bit of uh, you know extra information, extra footage, maybe extra outtakes that didn't make it into the main video. They get a chance to see that. And, and we have a whole lot of other features, so head on over there and give it a give it a, a, a look over. See if it, it's right for you. And we hope to see you real soon. In 1814, you took a little trip along with Colonel Jackson down the mighty Mississippi. What? <laughs> you never heard that? No. Serves you Brits right. <laughs> We're not filming, are we? Yes, we are. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to tax our tea. We'll no! show you. We'll show you. <laughs> oh my gosh. He was a lot harder to catch the first time because he was. Yeah, do you keep doing. Wait. Yeah, you're like an archaeologist digging him out of there. Look at his little face. Stop doing that. He's so slippery.